Hi everybody! Um, I did promise I wasn't going to make any more screencasts. That's still true, um, but I did want to make a video to explain this theory and how this theory helps us predict the shapes of molecules. Uh, for us to be able to predict the shapes of molecules is actually incredibly important, especially in fields like biology and biochemistry, where the shape of a molecule can determine the properties of that molecule and how that can act in biological systems, for example. So the prevailing theory that we use is a theory called VSEPR, V-S-E-P-R. Um, that is an acronym. It stands for Valence Shell Electron Pair Repulsion Theory. Um, and this theory helps us predict molecule shape um, by helping us to understand what the electron pairs around the central atom do to the shape of the molecule. Um, because electron and electron pairs repel, um, what they'll do is they'll influence the shape of the molecule in total. So what we do first is we determine something called electron pair geometry. Uh, we find the center of the atom, and then we look at the electron pairs that are surrounding the central atom, and then we consider exactly how um, those electron pairs are oriented towards each other. Then we consider the, bond, the bonding pairs as well as the lone pairs, and that helps us determine a more specific type of shape called the molecular geometry, or what's often called molecular shape. Uh, in questions, when we ask you what is the shape of this molecule, we are referring to the molecular geometry. So for the rest of this video, I want to tell you about different families of shapes and how we can use those families to help determine the shapes of molecules. Um, however, you do need to do lots of practice problems because you must be able to first draw the Lewis structure correctly and then use that correct Lewis structure and this Vesper theory to help predict the molecular shape as well as the bond angles around the central atom. So I want to move here to the simplest family. Um, this is the linear electron pair geometry family. So I have here some models. Um, this is um, Cl2. Um, this is what we call um, a molecule with one area of electron density. Um, areas of electron density can either be bonding pairs of electrons or they can be lone pairs of electrons. Um, really in a Cl2 molecule or any molecule with just one area of electron density, um, all you have is a straight line, right? Um, here is a molecule with two areas of electron density. So that's one area. Here's the second area. Now, yes, I know that second area has three bonding pairs of electrons in it, but multiple bonds do count as one. So this is one area of electron density. This is the second area of electron density. And then there's your central atom appearing here for the first time in a molecule. So the rule of thumb is um, if you look at your Lewis structure, or you look at a model and you determine that there is one, uh, one area of electron density or two areas of electron density, then the molecule has a linear electron pair geometry. Um, and since you don't really have any lone pairs present on the center atom, they also have a linear molecular geometry. So the true shape of the molecule um, is a straight line with a bond angle of 180 degrees. Okay, so um, let's take a look at the trigonal planar family or trigonal planar electron pair geometry. Um, here's my central atom, this black atom here, and it's got three areas of electron density around it. Um, that double bond counts as one, so that's one, um, that's two, and then that's three. Um, it's called trigonal planar because it's flat. Uh, let me see if I can show you exactly how this looks. Um, not a great way to demonstrate this, but um, it's flat and there's um, three points on it. Um, and if you have three areas of density but no lone pairs on the center, which is what this molecule is going through right now, um, it also has a trigonal planar molecular geometry. And as you can see, the bond angle about the center is 120 degrees. So let's, let's take a look at when we have one lone pair on the center. When you have one lone pair on the center, um, which is what this stick is standing for, 
um, and a total of three areas of electron density around the center, um, you have a molecule that still has, tr you know, a trigonal planar electron pair geometry in that the electron pairs themselves around the center um, still have a trigonal planar geometry to them or shape to them, but the actual molecule, because you're missing an atom up here, is not trigonal planar. So if you can imagine that this stick here stands for the lone pair, uh, and you just focus on the atoms that make up the molecule itself, you have a V-shaped molecule. Um, different books call it different things. There's um, V-shaped, of course, and then there's just bent, um, or there's angular. Um, all of these names are equivalent to each other. So um, bent, or angular, or V-shaped is the name of this molecular geometry. Um, and the bond angle will be less than 120 degrees. So let me explain why. Um, any lone pair on the center exerts greater force on the bonding electron pairs that make up the bonds than the bonding electron pairs do. Um, so what this pair of electrons does is it will actually push the bond angle Oops, sorry, got really blurry there. It'll actually push the bond angle to be much closer than the original 120 degrees. Um, so sorry for the blurriness there. Uh, all right, so let's go ahead and take a look at the next family here. Um, this is the tetrahedral electron pair geometry family. This is where you have a central atom and you have four uh, areas of electron density around it. So here's the black atom in the center again. So when you count electron pairs, this is one, two, three, and then this one over here is four. Um, it's called tetrahedral because if you can imagine lines that connect all of these white atoms here, you form a three-dimensional shape called, you guessed it, a tetrahedron. It's a shape with four sides to it. So if you have a molecule with four areas of electron density, but no lone pairs on the center, so in other words, you have all atoms connected to the center with no lone pairs on it, the molecular geometry or the molecular shape is still called tetrahedral. And the bond angle between the um, atoms around the center would be 109.5 degrees. So let's take a look at what happens when we have lone pairs on the center. So I've removed one of the atoms. Um, this stick stands for the lone pair of electrons that now exists. Um, and what I have now is still four areas of electron density. Um, so I still have that tetrahedral electron pair geometry, but there is a lone pair in the center. Take a look at the atoms surrounding the center though. Um, that is forming a molecule shape that we call trigonal pyramidal. Um, so it's a triangle based pyramid basically. Uh, the bond angle will be less than 109.5 because, as I stated before, um, lone pairs on the center exert a lot of repulsion on the bonding electron. So it's actually going to push all of these three atoms to be closer together. Uh, let me see if I can do this one handed. Uh, kind of like that. I'm squeezing them down. Um, so that's why the bond angle tends to be less than 109.5. Um, let's remove one more atom and see what shape that gives us. Okay, so this is my molecule now with two um, lone pair electrons on the center. That would be represented by these two sticks here. Um, if you just take a look at the atoms that make up the molecule, you now very definitely have a bent molecular shape or a bent molecular geometry. Um, or you can call it angular, or you can call it V-shaped. Any of those shape names are acceptable. And again, the presence of more lone pairs on the center pushes in these two atoms here much closer to each other than they did before. So that's why it says there that the bond angle is now much smaller than 109.5. That's it for the tetrahedral family. Let's